Hello, I'm Gary Hitterman, a friend of Sean's West. He asked that I do another tying video. And what I'm going to make is a little Goddard caddis. We have a size 16 dry fly hook. But I'm not going to spin hair to tie this little guy with. So I've got some 6 aught black. You pick the color you want and the thread make. So we're going to start it, leave space for the hackle. And we've just did a, a thread foundation. And then we're just going to take it back to the barb. You can use a dubbing twister if you have one. I have one of these. And we're going to put in a dubbing loop at the back. So I did it once around. Then I come over, under, catch it to close the loop. Wind the thread back up to the front. Out of the way. I'm just going to set this down here. We're going to use caribou. Relax, relax. You can use deer hair. I tie these with uh, bleached elk, with elk. Usually the shorter that they use for bleach for elk hair, caddis wings, not the big, long, bulky stuff. And we're just going to reach in here and grab a good, good bunch. trying to get you, like I said, a, a good bunch. It's kind of flattened, but we're going to flatten it out even more. We've got to get the under fur out of here. And what I'm interested in tying with is this between the thumbs is what I'm interested in. I like that little color. It's just a light done. This is a lot whiter. Okay. And so then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to actually trim it away. So we get rid of a lot of under fur at one time. We're into this sweet spot area that I'm talking about in here. And then you just comb it out. And it combs out rather quickly. This, you can use the potato chips. This is a pedache clamp. Okay. Whatever you're happy and then you've got. I'm just going to put the hair in there and then what we're going to do is we're just slowly going to work it out and I'll try to do it upright then we're going to just spread it so I just gently open up the clamp a little bit spread it and with you working with it if with hair, this doesn't. You've got a hole to manipulate this. You've got a hole. If, you, if not, it opens up, and your hair will start slipping away. So you've just got to work. If you're working down here, just put your thumb and stuff down there to work that. And then as you go across, just keep your thumb going. got a fairly flat bunch okay and I'm 
going to re readjust back up a little bit into the sweet spot if I can. And I'm not worried about the tips because we're going to come in here and we're just going to go snip snip. Okay. And then we're going to find our dubbing loop, open it up. And I'm going to just show you that we just insert it. Close the thread. You've got it. You can tap it or pull it. Because we're going to trim 90% of this hair off. Okay. Fairly centered. I've now got to work. And what I'm going to do is use the scissor tips to spread it even more. Okay. And we bring it and then you just pinch it close. Turn, 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 turn. I'm going counterclockwise if that's important to you. And then I run my fingernail along the thread and we, it starts to spin the hair. So we're just making a dubbing brush. Oh, this isn't quicker than spinning either. It's just another way to put the hair on. It's not a shortcut. This is going to happen. What I'm working on is there. A, there's an area that there's no hair in. You can see it. So we just take and kind of just wrap it forward, and then bring everything back to where it needs to be, where your tie in. Okay. So that takes up that few turns, takes up the space. Now we've got hair on the hook shank. And we're actually just like fold and hackle. We're just brushing it to the back. And then you're just taking a turn, a turn until you're going, I gotta brush some more to the back. And this is fairly tight. Each time we're just pulling hair out of the way and folding hair. So it's one wrap in front of the other. And then we've got a bunch of hair that's twisted, so just free it up. Okay, we need to take and pack a little bit. So you've got to keep this tight and you've got to come in and just kind of push.
not hard, it's a size 16 dry fly hook. But we did free up a little space, got it packed, and then just continue on. Now we're up to the hook eye again, so let's see if we can't just work it back and free up the space for the hackle. There we go. I go around, over, and under the dubbing loop thread. I do a wrap in front of it, then just fold it back to catch it, and just wind back over it. So as you see the thread's being pushed back to the back to the rear, we've caught it, we've locked it. Trim it away. Just a simple whip hit finish. I go ahead and put about four turns to make a nice smooth base because we're going to tie in a hackle in on this little section. So we've got a nice thread base to work with when we come back and reattach the thread. It's tight. And now we got a puff. And there's a hook in there somewhere. So the first thing I do is I kind of find the bend, the bottom, and I'm just going to trim it flat. I know there are guys that talk about that the bottom of a Goddard caddis has to be kind of rounded. Okay? No. You can just tie it flat. It's Phyllis Diller's, Phyllis Diller's hair. It goes everywhere until we start working on it. So now we've kind of got the flat part. Yeah, nobody knows who Phyllis Diller is. So there's our base. I'm pretty happy with it. Can you see that? We're just so now we're gonna come in, take it. What I'm gonna do is come in here with an angle with the scissors, close out far. And we're gonna start a tent shape. same thing over here on the other side we just start in close and go out far and then from there we're going to do all our corrections but as you can see we're starting that little Goddard shape what I'll also do is we fold it back and so I'll take and pull back a bunch and then we've got that part and then we just I come in and trim it so there's the little rear of the caddis and then after that, it's just all you trim till you're happy with the size of it. 
like I said, this is a 16. So you can see where we're trimmed up and then I just start pulling stuff back. I hope my fingers are out of the way. And we're going to come in and trim, trim. Come in on the other side, trim. And we're making more of the tent shape is where I'm at. And then I look at the bottom again and go, okay. So I've been moving it. Let's put it back in the vise so you can get a good where I'm kind of at now and I'll work in the vise so we've got we've got a flat profile the other side And literally what I'm doing is I'm actually trimming, giving this top section a butch. I'm just cutting it flat to help with that caddis profile. Because as you cut a butch, they just get shorter and lay down for you. Instead of going snip, 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 snip. Each one, you can just come in, and then you can come back. On that, so I'm pretty happy. We've got a tent shape. I'm going to turn it upside down, come back through, and work on the bottom. I got a couple here I'm not happy with. Okay. Get rid of the loose hairs. That part is done. This caribou will float like a cork. I'm going to come in, reattach my thread. found a feather I like, I still like it. 
it's a brown with a black center. I like the two tone. So, so if you have these and you don't know what to do with them because they're not solid brown like you want, you can do this. camera pick up that how the, the fibers there's a two-tone dark center quit shaking so I'm going to peel off the top part I like trimming the bottom part where it looks like that catch it on the far side. What is the trim part of the bottom? There's some little stubble barbels, and the idea is the thread catches those. With the top being smooth, when I go my first wrap and it's being there's this much bare on the top. Okay, so when I go down and around, all the fibers hopefully stick out 90 degrees. Put on about three turns. I'm pretty happy. The Goddard caddis does not need a lot of hackle on it because the hair is what floats it. We've caught it. We've trimmed it. Finish one, two, three. Tighten one, two, three. So we've done a double. We've not crowded the hook eye. On some flies, I think hackle just gives flies a halo kind of look to it, like they're trying to be alive and flutter off the water or sort of thing. So that's what I'm saying. You could tie this and put and go fish it, it would catch fish without hackle. Okay. And I don't worry about antennas unless they're for show. They don't need to be. Because if you've ever seen caddis antenna, they are ultra fine and they wave all over the place. They don't stick out straight on our caddis, but we have small caddis compared to what they have up in Canada. So basically I'd do 16s, 12s, above that I'll just go ahead and spin here. Okay, so this is to make a little one. It's ugly, it's rough. Put some fly floating on it. float forever and you can't ever being this small you can't ever keep trimming 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 you just got to reach a point 
I'm happy with the overall shape because you'll cut all your hair off trying to it's not a bass bug it's not even close but you've got hair a tent shape it's durable which is the next big thing if you do it right and you don't tear up your flies with forceps it's a 50 fish fly okay because your forceps if you get in here will mar up the hair or break your hackle stem fish generally are, they chomp on it they hold it any questions? You got it all? Alright.